approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, the master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all the property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down and did him homage and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Move with compassion. The master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When the servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened. They were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So, will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. Hello and welcome to Close Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bai, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. That last line gives me the willies. So will the heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from his heart. You know, uh, this is a new translation. The old translation said, not seven times, but 70 times seven. That's 490 as opposed to 77. And then when the, the, the master calls him in, he says, you worthless, lazy lout. Really severe. Oh, you wicked servant. Sound like something in a play. Ah, it's the most radical thing about Christianity. Is it the crucifixion? Is it the resurrection? Is it the virgin birth? I think the most radical thing about Christianity for us is the ability to forgive. That's hard. That is so very difficult not to carry the torch and be angry. Because if they would have done that to you, you would have done the exact same thing. Yeah, I would have. It have made both of us stupid. And I think I've used this before, but it's just a... a one of the most powerful things. I worked uh, for years in the state penitentiary. One of the guys I got very close to was a Colombian cartel hitman who had been down a little bit over 30 years. And in the process of being in solitary for 20 years, he learned how to speak English and he did it by learning the Bible. And really did have a conversion. Really, really had a conversion. Uh, first one to tell you, he's a terrible sinner and a bad boy. But first one to tell you, he believes God had truly forgiven him. And he had begged for God's mercy and he believed in it. Well, as it happened, I was out of town when he died. 
And the, the, the hit was really big in the local paper and everyone knew it and it was a big thing. And there were, there were three guys arrested in the, in the death of this guy that they, they, that they blew away. So uh, when he died, it was in the paper and I had to read it online. I don't like to go to blog sites but I was online and I wanted to read as much as I could to what people were saying. And it's pretty awful. She had killed him 30 something years ago, saved us a whole bunch of money. You know, well, one of them's dead. We, you know, we ought to fry the other two and just save the state some money and going on and on. And I don't know, maybe 10, 12 entries down in the blog site the son of the man who he killed weighed in. And he said, I met Miguel a number of years ago. He said, Miguel was a good man. But he said, like my dad, he made some really bad choices in life. He said, had it been up to me, Miguel would have been released years ago, but that was not my choice. He said, the only thing that an eye for an eye does is it makes all of us blind. And how many of us pray that God will give us what we deserve instead of begging for his mercy and his compassion? It was profound. Absolutely profound. I don't know the young man, I don't know his life, but the person who wrote that statement, his life has been touched by Christ. I have no idea what religion he, was, he is or his dad was. <clears throat> but that young man has been touched by Christ. And you know, uh, there's so many uh, there's just so many powerful examples of heroic, heroic forgiveness. I think of the Amish schoolhouse where those kids were, and I, and I, I don't remember all the details, but some madman went into an Amish schoolhouse and killed a bunch of kids. The mercy, the forgiveness of those people is phenomenal. Phenomenal. We had a couple kids riding around in a little Toyota truck one day. They thought it was funny to take a chunk of concrete and throw it into the windshield of the oncoming car. They threw it into the windshield of a 23-year-old young lady who was a youth minister at her church. Killed her instantly. And of course, the, the, the trial became a very big thing in the media. And uh, when all was said and done, they gave these two young men somewhat of a lenient sentence. I don't remember all the details. And so the father and the girl's two sisters walk out the courtroom. And of course, the media sticks the microphone right in their face. and said, what do you think of the decision today? And the dad very, very calmly said, you know, my daughter loved children. She spent her life working for children. She would be very happy to know that two young kids who performed one stupid act didn't have their entire lives ruined for that. Tell me where to go to get hearts like this. Where do you sign up? Where do you sign up when in, in the midst of a young boy losing his daddy, a father and two sisters losing his daughter and their sister, and you have so much compassion, so much mercy, so much love. But time and time throughout the scriptures, we're reminded, forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. The measure you measure with will be measured back to you. Your Father in heaven will treat you in exactly the same way as you treat one another. You know, I don't want to say read my lips, but it doesn't, it doesn't get any, any plainer than that. And the idea that some people think they have the luxury of holding on to their anger and their hate because they're justified. Holding on to anger and hate is like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die. I mean, people who go through life, I have weddings. I have weddings and, you know, the bride was seven years old when their parents got a divorce over 20 years ago. And literally, I can't have mom and her new husband and dad and his new wife in the same end of the church. They can't talk to each other. They can't get over it. You know, they can't even say, hello, how are you? You know, and you go, people, get a life. This was 20 plus years ago. And yeah, I, I don't know what the details were. I don't know who did what to who. But I think you've moved on. You have a new relationship. You have a new marriage. And you're holding on to that? And you're wishing them harm? Because, you know, you put them through med school and they ran off with this bimbo who was, who was, it was in nursing school? And you're still angry after all these years. And that's what our Lord is talking about forgiveness. That's why when I made the statement earlier, the most radical thing about Christianity is our ability to forgive. It's radical because it's so hard to do. And the Lord understands that it's hard to do, you know. And years ago, and, and uh, back in those days, we'd have these penance services. We'd all be, always have a little sermon. And a newly ordained priest was, was speaking. And he said, you know, he said, what is the worst sin anyone could ever commit? Heresy? Apostasy? Sacrilege, abortion, murder, killing the Pope. He said, no. He said, the worst thing anyone could do is try to kill God. And he said, and just as they were doing it, before he breathed his last, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So he's not asking us to do something that he hasn't already modeled. And the deal was, he was dying on the cross for the same people who killed him. He was dying on the cross for the same people who killed him, that they might come to know everlasting life. That is pretty radical. Stay with us, we'll be back in a minute. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Close to Walk Catholic Communications, thank you for being here today and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need and also your financial support. We are donor driven and that is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey is over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. 
God bless you. His master summoned him and said, you wicked servant. I forgave your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each one of you forgives your brother from your heart. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each one of you forgives your brother from your heart. You know, the last three weeks have been a pretty consistent thing about the power to forgive sins, and the sacrament of confession, you're Peter. And now this whole thing of how many times do we have to forgive? When, when, when does that end? And the only thing I can do is share just some incredible, powerful stories of how people have done that. You know, one of the things that oftentimes happens, and the inability to forgive is very frequent in the sacrament of reconciliation. You know, Father, I just can't, I just can't forget about what they did to me and how terrible they were, how ugly, they, whatever. And that inability to forgive, and, I, and you know, and, and, and I don't know what to say, because those are the times where we deal with life with, you know, uh, eyes of faith and a very human heart. A very human heart that's been wounded and broken and hurt. And yet in my eyes of faith, I want to say, I'm going to let that go. I can let that go. That's not worth fighting over this, that, or the other, okay? That sort of thing. And so oftentimes, what I ask them to do for their penance so you know what? You know what I want you to do? I want you to go around and start at the first station. And I just want you to walk through. I want you to do a book. I don't want you to do the Stations of the Cross. I just want you to go look. And look at what they do it. And look at how they're treating him. And when you get to the last one, well, second to last one, as he dies upon the cross, I want you to remember what he said last. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And, you know, you say, well, that's nice. But these people knew what they were doing. They set out to get me. They knew darn good and well what was going to happen. And they did it on purpose. And if I wouldn't have stopped them, they'd have done it again. That sort of thing. Got you. You know, one of the things I've had the opportunity to do is to do a fair amount of traveling and, and be involved with ministry with priests from all over. And years ago, and you've heard this story, but I got to tell it, it's a right gospel, okay? Years ago, I was up in the Northeast doing a parish mission, and the morning after the first talk, the associate priest said, hey, what you doing? I said, nothing, I'm just hanging out. He said, good, he said, come on, let's take a ride. He said, I want to talk. So he told me, he said, you know, he said, three or four of my buddies and I, about five years ago, we started going out to Colorado to take a ski vacation. And he said, you know, the first year we were out there, he said, we, we got off the lift, we were waiting to go down the mountain, and we got to talking to these guys. And it turned out, it was three priests from San Francisco, and they were doing the same thing. So, you know, we had dinner, we got to be buds. And so for the last five years, we same time, you know, we, we plan our vacations together. We get up, cook breakfast, ski all day, come back, say mass, go out to dinner. That's our vacation. He said last year, one of the guys from San Francisco, nice guy, but always kind of quiet to himself, you know. And we're coming back from the uh, from the slopes one day, and he says, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to be the celebrant for mass and, and preach. He said, yeah, no problem, not a problem. So anyway, he, 
He starts his sermon, he said, the other guys told me that I really needed to let you in on this, whatever, four or five months ago. And I'm, you know, the names and places have been changed to protect the innocent, okay? But I think he was at San Francisco Presbyterian. He's just there visiting parishioners. And this nun comes up and said, are you a Catholic priest? He said, yeah. She said, please, this man needs to see a priest. And she just gave him a name and a room number. So he eventually got over there. He walks in the room, and there's a guy laying there, and he's uncovered, and his stomach's all swollen. He's all jaundiced, walking. Hey, how are you? Don't come in here with all that God stuff. He didn't say stuff. He said, I want to hear it. He said, I'm just coming in to say hello. And how are you? He said, look, I told you I don't want to hear about you and your God. He said, besides, he said, what I did was so bad I went to the penitentiary for it. The penitentiary thing kind of got his attention. He said, oh. He said, well, if you've been to the penitentiary, you've already done your penance. He said, what are you talking about? He said, the guy just kind of got this staring at a blank wall, you know, and he said, I've been a drug addict. An alcoholic as long as I can live as long as I can remember he said I worked for the railroad so I went to work one day stoned as usual and he said I forgot to flip a switch and a mother and a father and their two little girls were killed that's why I went to jail priest got very quiet So was that March 19th, 1971 in Fremont, California? Man looked at him like he had seen a ghost. And how'd you know that? That was my mother and my dad and my two sisters. With that, he passed out. He visited that man every day for two weeks and buried him in the church. And as he's talking, he said, you know, he said, I'm in the seminary. And I got a call telling me my family's dead. You, you know, when you get a call telling you, you your family's dead, the details don't really matter. He said, I never knew who he was. I never wanted <laughs> to know who he was. But he said, you know, the sad thing about it was, he said, that day, my grandfather became a man I never knew. He said, he was so filled with hate and bitterness and anger. I mean, believe me, he had a date circled on a calendar when this man was supposed to get out. And he swore that he was going to be at that gate and settle the score when that man walked free. He said, thank God. Thank God that my grandfather died before that man was released. Now here's a real kicker. I'm not God. The jaundiced man in the hospital bed died in God's graces. I'm not real sure about Grandpa. He died with hate and a desire to revenge. Can't speak for him, but I hope at some point in his demise he sought God's mercy and God's forgiveness. The perpetrator was made whole again. Those who had been sinned against live to get even. I think we need to think about that. I think we're very, very quick to look at people who have a past. Don't we all? We all have a past. And I'm certainly not going to get on television and tell you all my secrets. And I think you'd be a fool for any of you to do the same. 
We've all got a pass. We've all got, we've all made mistakes. And we've all had things done to us that have been very painful and very hurtful. And it's kind of nice to think we deserve to mumble our, under our breath and call them names because we're justified. And maybe we are justified. We're not sanctified. We're not purified. Our hatred will destroy us long before the sins of those who've sinned against us if they're repentant. Scary thought. Very scary thought. But I think it's something we need to understand. Time and time again, our Lord invites us to imitate his mercy, his compassion, and his love. And, and, and what's amazing is, <laughs> I, did, I did a 50-year class reunion, uh, local girls' high school. The problem is they're contemporaries of mine, okay? I said, you know, women really are from Men really are from Mars and women are from Venus. I said, you know, guys get upset, they get outside, they yell a few things, they throw a few punches, they go get a beer. I said, I promise you, there are some of you who are here who hope you see that you know what who made fun of your prom dress back in 1967, okay? He hadn't forgotten about it. And I said, you realize why there's so many more women archeologists? They just love digging up stuff from the past, okay? I mean, get over this stuff. Get over it. Not just women, that, that's a joke. But all of us need to understand that all of us are, are fallible, all of us are sinful, all of us have been hurt, and all of us have hurt someone else. And all of us will one day stand before the throne of God so will my heavenly Father do to you unless each one of you forgives his brother from your heart. The fact that we're sinners, the fact that we're, we're hurt, the fact that we've hurt others, not a news flash for anybody. The fact that we'll stand before God is not a news flash for anybody. But whether or not we'll be justified depends on our, our ability to let go, let God forgive, and move on. Give to others the mercy we seek from God. We thank you for being with us. May each day bring you closer in your walk with the Lord. God bless you.